This is my son's room, Adam. He's my older son. He just turned nine recently. And this is actually where he does his homework or where he's uh, supposed to do his homework. You know? It's amazing the kind of things nine-year-olds need these days. Look at this. I'll tell you a story about him that I think you're going to enjoy and you'll appreciate after reading this last chapter about desire. It happened a couple of months ago and he was playing video games and it was getting a little bit late. His younger brother was looking over his shoulder and he hadn't done his homework. So as a parent, I'm not overly strict, but like any parent, I want my child to do their homework. I went up to Adam and I said, Adam, are you going to do your homework tonight? And without looking back, without thinking, almost an automatic response, he says, I can't. That got me thinking and I, and, and I asked him, you can't, why not? And he said, I, I just can't. And then I thought to myself, you know, I'll try a little psychology experiment with my uh, child. I don't do this often, mind you, but I, I thought I would this time. And I said to him, Adam, if I gave you $20, could you do your homework then? And immediately he paused the game. He looked back at me and he said, absolutely. I'll, I'll run upstairs right now and I'll do it. And I said to him, so you can do your homework oh yeah, if you give me $20. And, uh, and then I said to him, well, why did you tell me that you couldn't? And he said, oh, and this is where the truth comes out. And he said, oh, you know, I'm tired and my favorite show's coming on pretty soon. Uh, so I thought I wouldn't do it today. That's the truth. It's not that he can't, he just doesn't want to. And, uh, and then he does this pause and he looks at me and he says, so are you going to give me $20? And I said, no, I'm not going to give you $20. Run upstairs and finish your homework. And, uh, and he did. What that story illustrates is that when our desire is low for something, we generally either forget about it, we don't do it, or we use the famous excuse, I can't. Have you ever heard someone say to you, look, I can't change jobs right now. I can't start a business. Uh, I can't go uh, on a vacation at the moment. I can't do this. I can't do this. Maybe you've said things like that. I, I can't lose weight. I can't start exercising right now. I don't have the time. I can't. We use those words all the time. You have to understand that what those words really mean is not that you can't. It's that your desire for doing that thing is so low that you just don't want to. That's the real excuse, just like my son. It's not that he couldn't come to this desk and do his homework. He didn't want to because his desire was low. When I offered him $20, his desire increased immediately and all of a sudden he could. He would run upstairs and do it. Of course, he didn't get the 20 bucks. So it's critical to align the goals that you've set to the desires that you have. Because without desire, you're not gonna put any effort into achieving your goals. You're just gonna forget about them. You'll put them into a desk drawer. If, if there was a desk drawer right now this, here, then that's where you'd put it. So desire is the driver of success. It's the thing that gets you out of bed every morning. It's the thing that gets you thinking about your goals because you want to achieve them so much. It's the thing that fuels success. It makes it possible, it makes it happen. And I'd much rather for you to have small, manageable, modest goals that you're passionate about, that you care about, that you want to get out of bed every morning and achieve, then some huge outlandish goal that, you know what, to be honest, you couldn't care less whether you achieve it or not. You have to have desire for the goals that you set. Without it, you're not going to succeed. It's as simple as that.